Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a couple things, all gold related. Uh, the first thing is going to be how much gold is in our American dollar coins. Then I'm going to have a little sponsored portion of the video. And at the end, I'm going to be talking about gold prices. So first up, the biggest question, let's get a good zoom on these. These are gold US dollar coins. All right, nice and shiny. These are Sacagawea uh, varieties, but you know, of course, if you're uh, familiar with the President series, all the U.S. presidents have their own gold coin as well. And uh, I get messages all the time from people asking exactly how much gold are in these dollar coins. The answer, zero. Gotcha. <laughs> there is no gold in these dollar coins. They are simply gold colored. Now, the majority of people in America don't collect coins or know anything about them. And today, as of the filming this video in 2024, there's a good portion of America who don't even use cash or change or these coins in particular. So they don't know anything about it. It's not really their fault. It's not like they teach this kind of stuff in schools. But these coins, when they were created, were made a gold color just to differentiate them from the regular quarters and other change that we have in our pocket. Now, some of you might be familiar with the Susan B. Anthony coins. These are also an American $1 coin. All right. This one happens to be a 1999 variety, which is a year they brought this back just randomly. Uh, most of these are going to be from 1979 or 1980 or 1981. The problem is that when they release these coins, too many people confuse them with a standard quarter. Even though they're a larger size coin in comparison, I don't know if you can see that, but with this quarter up against the edge, you can see it is a larger coin, but because of their color, because it just has basically a head, you know, if you're a couple feet away and your vision's not that great, this could easily be confused as a quarter when it's mixed with other pocket change. So they got rid of this. This was no longer, you know, a usable coin. It wasn't popular. People hated them. So they got rid of it completely. When they wanted to reintroduce a dollar coin, they wanted to do one that was distinctively different. And up until this point, we didn't have any gold colored coins in our US currency. Obviously, we have a lot of silver colored coins and we do have the penny, which is copper. So they wanted to do something completely different. They made it gold color, but it's not actually gold. What these coins are made of, they're clad, all right? There's a three layer system. So the core, the very center of it, which you do not see is solid copper. The outer layer on top and bottom is a manganese brass, all right? So that consists of manganese, brass, zinc, and nickel. So the reason these actually color is because most of the outside surface is brass. And brass obviously oxidizes and changes and it darkens with time and especially the oils from your hands and the environment, all right? So this is a nice shiny new one but you can find Sacagawea dollars or presidential dollar coins that are literally almost brown because they've just oxidized so much and they've changed their color so much. Now, some people do believe there's real gold inside of these coins, which again, is just not true. Other people believe that they're just gold plated and the gold is so thin that obviously it only has a dollar's value, but that is also untrue. There's absolutely zero gold content in our US dollar coins. So if you didn't know, now you do. So today's video is sponsored, and this is the sponsored portion of the video. We're gonna be talking about Rua Gold, which is a gold mining company. All right, here's the tickers for the company. Uh, if you're a US viewer, the ticker is the OTC one. So that is going to be N-Z-A-U-F. I'll put that on top of the screen. So I'm very excited about this particular opportunity. I'm actually in the process of transferring money over to one of my brokerage accounts so that I can purchase stocks in this company. Now, I mentioned this in the past, but when I'm looking to invest in a company that's publicly traded, I go to their website. Uh, almost always they're gonna have a presentation packet for you to look at. Of course, if you like to just be on your cell phone or your computer, laptop, whatever, uh, you can look at this online digitally. You can download it. Uh, I like to physically print these out, all right? So that I can look through, I can see you know, who's involved, look at the entire project, they usually have um, estimates in here, they'll have locations, all kinds of information. I mean, everything you would need to know as to why you would want to invest in that particular company. So we are gonna reference this packet a little bit. 
I'm gonna put a link in the uh, description box of this video so you guys can download this yourself or you can print it yourself. So Rua Gold is located in New Zealand. New Zealand has been rich in gold mining since the 1860s. There's a couple interesting aspects to this particular opportunity. They have very high grade gold targets, anywhere from 16 to 50 grams uh, per ton, which is extremely rich pay dirt. Something else to understand too is these particular locations, they haven't mined it in many years, but they were mined with old technology. So there's a lot of potential for just massively rich gold pay dirt. Also, this was a private company for a long time before they went public, which is a very good thing because they get a lot of stuff figured out before it's publicly traded. Now, something else I think is extremely important specifically about New Zealand is that historically they were very left, the government. And now the government is very capitalistic. What that translates to is it's much easier to mine there today than there was in previous decades. So I think a very important part of any business is the people running it. All right, so let's take a look at the team, the board of directors, and the management for Rua Gold. All right, all big names. These are all people with experience. All right, the chairman, Oliver Leno King, very important to note, he was the former chairman of Frontier Gold, which was sold for $2 billion. Not million, billion with a B. He was also the former chairman of Rocks Gold. He is currently the largest shareholder of Rua Gold. It just so happens that Oliver Leno King is also one of the richest people in New Zealand. Now, since we're name dropping, it's also important to mention Eric Sprout. Eric Sprout is a famous name in the mining industry. He is a self-made billionaire, and he is a shareholder of Rua Gold. Also, Peter Marone. He's the founder and former chairman of Yomana Gold. That company sold for $4.8 billion. He is also a shareholder of Rua Gold. These are all very successful rich people who are investing in Rua Gold. And all these successful people are investing their own money in Rua Gold because they see the potential for profit. So there's so much to go over in this presentation, but I just want to show you the locations for these major mines. All right, there's the North Island that has the Haraki Gold Field and the South Island that has the Reefton Gold Field. All right, so the uh, Haraki had already produced over 15 million ounces of gold and over 60 million ounces of silver. Now, this is also something interesting to look at. This is a graph showing four different Rua Gold properties and how much gold was uh, extracted at what depths. So what's beyond that? Well, more gold. The question is, how much? Now, obviously, every gold mine has potential of finding gold, but people base their investments on probability. So you have locations that are historically known to have lots of gold. You have very rich pay dirt. So there's a ton of potential for more gold to come out of the ground. And as I just mentioned, we are just starting a gold bull market. Who knows where the prices will go? So on that note, I want to talk a little bit about the gold price, all right? I printed a couple charts. These are all from uh, Atmex. It's really interesting to see if you guys aren't staying up on precious metals prices. Gold has hit all-time highs, all right, this year. It's amazing because it hits one high, everyone gets excited, and it pulls back a little, and it hits another higher high, and then a higher high. Look at the gold price here, $2,373.20 an ounce. That is absolutely amazing, all right? So this first chart here is the one-year chart. So this is where gold was all year. You see it's very stable, dips down a little bit here in October 23, all right? Starts going up a little bit. And then obviously in recent months, it's just kind of skyrocketing. There's all kinds of factors why gold would go up, world economy events. I mean, there's a ton of reasons. And a lot of people, you know, talk about precious metals uh, prices that are, um, you know, controlled by certain companies and certain corporations and, you know, manipulation in the market. And I'm not going to get into that in this video, but, you know, I think gold should be a lot more than it is. I think silver is extremely um, underappreciated as well, but today's focus is gold. So this is the one year chart. All right. I want to show you guys, this is the all chart, which is not literally all of history. This starts back in 1994. So from 1994, gold at this point, is around $300 an ounce, $300 from 94 all the way to about 2003, all right? So in those years, 
if you were buying gold, if you were really into it, and boy, do I wish I was, but I wasn't, um, you'd be making bank today, right? Think about that, $300 an ounce, in and around. You jump around, 284, 305, you know, in that price range for many, many years. And then around 2000, late 2003, early 2004, it starts to climb and it never stops all the way until 2012, all right? And then obviously it pulls back a little bit and from 2013 all the way to like 2018-ish, starts to go back up after that. And now, like I said, we're hitting all time highs. So the point here really is that every time you see the gold price go up, some people hesitate to buy it. And it seems crazy, again, to think gold was $300 an ounce. Why would I buy it at $2,300 an ounce? Well, the idea, of course, is that you'll be happy you bought it at 23 when it goes to 25 or 3000 which a lot of professionals believe it will by the end of the year. A lot of people think it's going to hit $3,000. And I'm on that board. I think there's no reason for it not to. With everything going on in the world, it's insane it's not already 3000 or 4000 or 5000 uh, You know, so... I mean, obviously, it's, it's all a guess, but it's based on history, right? When we look at the gold chart overall here, even though it's pulled back for quite a few years, it's continually going up forever. For the foreseeable future, gold will be more and more needed, used in industry, as well as, you know, things like the medical industry, um, industrial industry, obviously jewelry, things of that nature. But there'll always be a need for gold. So if you're buying it today, you know, you might be thinking, oh, I'm spending a lot on this. Well, back in 2001, people thought $300 was a lot for gold. Back then, they were thinking, oh, man, this should be like 100 bucks. Why is it $300? That's a lot of money. Well, look what happens. We might be laughing at $2,300 when the price of gold is $10,000 an ounce. Boy, I should have bought someone who was 23. That's just how it works, right? So this last chart here, I just want to show you, this is comparing gold Again, from 94 until current. Uh, but the bottom line here is the US dollar. You see how it like pretty much flat lines? Never grows in value. It's slowly decreasing over time. That's what it's meant to do. It's meant to lose value. No matter what, even in a perfect economy, ideally, the US dollar loses like 2% or something every year, right? But obviously, with inflation going out of this world, that's not always true. A lot of times it's... Uh, you know, dropping in value a lot faster. But that bottom line is the US dollar. The top line is gold. These two middle lines are the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. All right, so if you're looking at index funds, you can see it's kind of following gold. Pretty good. Obviously, it was a little flat here when gold was spiking, but in general, they're going up. This is a lot of people's retirement plan. A lot of people put money in the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 specifically um, to retire on. And although that does go up and down, and there's, there's definitely some bad times to retire, in general, it's a very safe haven, just like gold. All right? The only difference is that this is a stock. It's a, it's a piece of paper. It's a promise from a company. If you have physical gold, that's something someone can't take away from you. You can have $50 million in the S&P 500, but if for some reason the internet shuts off, you have exactly zero. You have nothing to show for it. But if you hold physical gold, right, then you have everything to show for it. Everything you've ever invested in, you can physically hold. No one can take it away from you unless they come to your home and physically take it out of wherever you store it. So just a little talk about gold and the gold price. A lot of people think gold is very high because it's literally never been higher in history. Gold is more expensive now than it's ever been in human history. Really take that in. So it seems like a bad time to buy, right? It seems crazy. But my point here, and the whole thing I'm trying to get to, the, the point of the video really is to say that I think it's going to get a lot higher. And I'm not alone in that. There's a lot smarter people than me that believe that as well. So I think any time you can get your hands on some physical gold is a good time. Now, I know it's tough times for everyone all around. So not everyone has a bunch of money to buy physical gold, although you can get smaller pieces of it. You can get as little as a gram for about $90 or so, 100 bucks these days, depending on where gold price is. But that's why I also talked about our sponsor today, Rua Gold, because investing in these mines, you can invest as little as a couple bucks. And maybe your $5 investment turns into $10 or $20. Doesn't sound like much, right? But 
Of course, how much you gain is all about how much you risk. And do please understand that, you know, investing in any kind of stock is a risk. All right. So you want to do your own homework, your own research. And if it's something that sounds good to you, then go for it. But in this case, it's high risk, high reward, right? The chances of 2xing your money, 5xing, 10xing is a lot greater. If you invest in something like the, you know, S&P 500 or Dow Jones, you're almost guaranteed to slowly make money. But it's very low risk, low reward. So, you know, everyone has their own way of investing. I personally think it's great to do a little of everything. You know, invest a good amount of money into something that's very low risk. But occasionally, you play the lottery. And you never know. Someone has to win, right? Why can't it be us? Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.